actually, I, I'm pleased to see that the agenda came together and indeed does um, address all of these items. Thank you. Uh, Superintendent Sester, do you have any thoughts on the board's suggestion or comments? No, I think we're all on the same page. I just did a summary from my report, very similar to what Carolyn did, and we're pretty much right on the same page mm -hmm. okay, for all of the points, so that's great. And also, the um, I've asked the cabinet to, when they, I, I think it's also what the finance committee, the policy committee, the curriculum committee do, when we create these action items for the board, we, we refer back to the strategic plan and the reasons why these go towards uh, helping the strategic plan or So the cabinet knows that too, and so when they speak about their pieces or the agenda parts, I'll give their um, input on the strategic plan and how it ties in. Mr. Chair, I'm not here to comment if I may. Uh, a few years ago, I attended a workshop with uh, board members, and the question was asked of the audience, all board members, how much time do you spend at your board meetings on student achievement and student learning? And it was surprising that the uh, audience has probably less than 10 percent of the time to spend on that. I think if you were to do a day out here, it would show the public that we're spending our time on our primary focus as student achievement and student learning. So thank you. Great recommendation. Uh, other board members, any further comments or discussion on on that? We really time to our approval of our agenda. All right, hearing none, we have a, a motion by Mr. Donnell, a second by Ms. Markauer. Um, all those signified by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion passes 7 to 0. Thank you. This takes us to item number four community comment. And I don't believe we have any community comments. We've had the email open that we haven't had any. We do not have any community members here with us live in person. That takes us to item number five, recognition of awards and presentations. Um, 5A, cultural representative, Mr. Chester, do we have? Uh, I think Cynthia just said that she's not going to be on. Do you know what's on that? I'm not sure if he's on that. I don't know. Drew, is there any way to see if uh, Ahmed is on, on virtually with us? Sorry, I can't. My eyes aren't ready right now. Uh, I'm sorry, he is, no. he is not. Okay, okay, we'll move on then. Um, item 5B, student representative. It's my understanding we, we have at least one, if not both on. Yeah, I think Allie is on. Oh, great, another both on. Oh, Kaylee. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. So we'll open this up to Allie or Kaylee. Uh, either one of you, feel free to take it away. Okay, I'm going to read the Okay. This pandemic brought so much change to our everyday lives, and it's hard to believe, but we're getting used to our new normal. School is something that everyone has worried about. Everyone was concerned about when and how it would happen and what it would look like. Allie and I believe that students have both been excited and scared of the possibility to get back into the building. There are so many variables, and no one knows how they will play out. So we have so many role models in the community to guide us through these confusing times. Start of school. When the summer started to come to an end, it was time to think about school again. Except this year. No one knew what it was going to look like. There were so many questions, and there still are. Recently, we found out that going back to school would look like a hybrid form, with still the option of fully online for those who want it. Ellie and I think that this option was the best that anyone could hope for. Even though it would be great to go back to school fully, everyone knows that there would be too much of Going back to school is going to look very different than any other school year has before. And it is going to take a while to adjust, but it'll be okay. We will. We also know that it is expected that we will have to switch to fully online distance learning, possibly multiple, multiple times during the school year. We just hope that everyone will stay positive and realize that everything being done is for the health and safety of everyone around them, including themselves. That's on hybrid and online. Before this year, no one was really familiar with the idea of hybrid learning structure at school. No one even thought the core structure of in-person schooling experience would be questioned. When Allie and I took a look at three, the three options for going to school this year, fully online, hybrid, or in-person, 
We probably had similar thoughts to all of you. Fully online would possibly be the safest option regarding our physical health, but mental health and educational experience would suffer a little bit. Hybrid would also allow a good relationship for the students to have with their teachers and their learning in general, but would include more of a risk for students and staff's food. Fully in person would be great to have if there wasn't such a huge risk with student and staff's health. But right now, that taking that risk wouldn't be smart. Overall, Allie and I feel like a hybrid learning option would be the best of both worlds, which is what we both chose when we were asked the question. However, we do believe that having the option for students to do fully online will be very beneficial to some students. We want to thank every single person that helped plan for the school in this difficult time. We want to thank the teachers, staff, administration, and everyone in this meeting tonight for everything you've done. Allie and I, as students, understand that this is a very hard time for everyone, and we appreciate the flexibility you have all have shown. We are beyond impressed with how this entire community has been working to get together to get through this pandemic. Now, all we can do is hope for the best with this school year and see what happens. Once again, thank you all so much. Allie and I look forward to the school year. Wonderful. Thank you, Kaylee. Can you hear me? Uh, sort of. It's a little hard, but yeah. Sorry, I, I am unmuted. He's I, I'm good. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah, okay, perfect. Kaylee, thank you for that. Allie, do you have anything you want to add on or any comments? Nope, I think Kaylee covered it all. Okay, wonderful. Thank you, and thank you for joining us. We really appreciate it. And we wish uh, both of you just a, a great year, and hopefully everything goes uh, the best it can and, and all that stuff. So, uh, board members, do you have any questions or comments for either of our student reps? I just want to. I'm unmuted. Can you? I just want to say I was really impressed by your statement, and it was just so well written and just really showed the complexity um, of the issue and your commitment to representing the students. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, that brings us to item 5C early childhood program move to Roosevelt. Ms. Sage, I think the uh, floor is yours. All right. Hi. Good evening, everyone. Happy Monday. Um, so joining uh, me tonight, I have three teachers from our early learning program. I have Katie Shuda, Cheryl Tanaglia, and Wendy Susan. Katie is an all-day preschool teacher at Roosevelt. Uh, Cheryl is an all-day... Did you hear me? Okay. okay. Cheryl is an all-day uh, preschool teacher at... And Wendy is um, providing early childhood special education services for our um, off-site locations this year and has done some self-contained and other work in years prior. So these three wonderful educators are here to speak to you all tonight about the, um, the possible early childhood move to Roosevelt and why it would benefit the community as we continue um, to look at how we could align our strategic plan in our near future. So. I'm going to turn it over to Katie Shuda. She was the first one I saw on my screen. So you get to go first. Perfect. Hi, good evening, everybody. I'm Katie Shuda. I have had the opportunity to teach preschool at Roosevelt. This will be going into my third year. So I've been able to see the benefits of being in the elementary building firsthand. Um, one of the biggest things that I love is I've had the opportunity to team up with third grade and have reading buddies, which my preschoolers have loved. And the third grade teachers have also enjoyed that their um, students have gotten to be mentors to the students and it's helped teach them both social skills and um, interact with different ages. And I have had numerous parents over the last two years to tell me that they have chosen to keep their kids in the district um, because of their experience with the early childhood program being, being at Roosevelt. They have before thought about sending their kids to a different district and open enrolling them, but because of the positive experience that they have had, they are wanting to keep their kids in the district, which is the ultimate goal. So moving more of our programming into the elementary schools, getting those kids from there, having them being at a building from 
preschool through fifth grade really helps me have that home base and being on the same schedule as other siblings and start time and having one off and pick up first those kids that are at Roosevelt and Jefferson is really nice for those parents. So having had that experience for the for the past three three years, I really think that it would be very beneficial for the entire program to be moving to Roosevelt and be able to have more connections with the building as a whole. Thanks, Katie. I appreciate that. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Cheryl now, who's also going to give us her thoughts on the move to Roosevelt. Hi, I'm Cheryl Tanaglia, and I teach teaching up in the class of Academy right now. Um, I have been in the district for several years, so this is my 21st year, so I have um, had the privilege of being a program girl. When I came 21 years ago, we a small um, program with a few classrooms, and we have grown um, crazy, especially with the voluntary pre-K funding that has been coming from. We have really added um, classes, which have really benefited our community, um, especially the long day classes. The um, community seems to really enjoy sending their children to, and we've really seen the progress um, with those children in the all day classes and that they're more prepared for kindergarten. Um, so as a result of um, hopefully moving to Roosevelt, we're hoping that we will have more space to accommodate all that growth. Um, um, right now, we've had to do some creative planning to um, rearrange our classes so that we can fit into McKinley. Um, another thing that is a big concern is the bathrooms. Um, staff bathrooms and student bathrooms, there just aren't enough. And I feel like we're all spending a lot of time waiting um, where it would be alleviated if we um, had more of those. Um, also, extra office space for our specialists our preschool screeners, our cultural liaisons, so that they are not having four or five people in one um, office space. And then um, just the storage. In early childhood, we have so many toys that we use to um, meet the needs of our students, and I feel like our storage is kind of busting at the same time. So if we were able to move to Roosevelt in that new addition, I do think that most of those would be alleviated. Thank you, Cheryl. And last but not least, I'm going to turn it over to Wendy. Hi, everybody. And I'm really going to piggyback with both Cheryl and Katie in that I have found that our early childhood program has grown since my tenure here. And as we've grown, we've also kept best practices at the forefront. So we've always been on the cutting edge of curriculum of service delivery of meeting the needs of our students whether they're in a full day program or in a uh, moderately or structured program as we look to the future um, it is critical that we have a connection from early childhood to kindergarten to one through five and so our presence really does need to be in elementary school settings. When I first looked at coming back to Fairville, early childhood special education was at Lincoln. Granted, that was 25, 27 years ago. But there is a history of having early childhood programs in the elementary. And that was one of the things that resonated with me as a parent and resonates with the teacher today is if we can have families comfortable with their home district or with the school building, they're more apt to commit to having their children in school more often. And when we look at making those transitions for our young students with some developmental delays, the ability to be able to have those connections already made just through incidental incidental um, occurrences in the hallway or out on the playground is a big deal to children and parents that it's not a scary place. It's a place that is known that care about my child or um, or really hear my concerns when I talk about, boy, this is a big place, but yet everybody knows everyone. That's the kind of message we want to send is that it is a positive thing to look at, but at the same token, 
being a lifetime member of Faribault, we really need to have the community with us every step of the way. Um, I know being part of the different committees that we have tried so hard to get community input and I think that the addition resonates with the fact that we heard the community say we don't want a new build. Okay, this is not a new build, but I think community members will be surprised if ground is breaking and we haven't brought them along the way in some manner. So I think that's our next step is how can we encourage the community to have some input, have some voice in our plan as we move forward. I do think they will be behind us, but we need to bring them along. And so I'm excited for this next step. Any questions? Okay, back to you, Olivia. All right, thank you, Wendy and Cheryl and Katie for sharing. Um, we've had a, a couple of staff meetings and some um, just overall views of the plans and place that we, in the direction that we want to go. So we will continue to meet and discuss some of those, um, some of the directions that we're looking to take. But I think overall, our, our feedback from the staff is that it would be a positive uh, move and that it's not just about relocating um, the physical program, it's about really implementing those best practices in a building in a community where we can foster a really great partnership pre-K through grade five, and then having them really invested in the Faribault Public School District and staying with us through through graduation. So um, and most teachers are on board and they see it as a really positive change and we're just continuing to work together as a team to make sure we're, we're making that um, decision together. I don't think I'm going to one here anymore. Do, do, do we know what that is, Drew? It's like when you're outside, you can use your mic. Oh, Wendy, can you use your mic, please? That was it. Thank you. Uh, I hope you stay with us in case you, uh, we have some specific questions for you, but thank you for muting that. Uh, board members, I'd like to turn it over to all of you to feel free to ask uh, Olivia or any of the other ladies that presented any questions. Mr. Chester, if you want to say a few words before we open it up for uh, comments and any questions, feel free to. Yeah, so one of the things we talked about was connecting with the strategic plan and how Anne is on uh, the video there too. So Anne-Marie, if you're okay talking a little bit about how that connects with our strategic plan, that'd be great. Absolutely, thank you so much and good evening. So I just thought about this a little bit as we were approaching this meeting tonight and you know, with our new strategic plan, it's so good. Our mission and vision, our uh, strategies and core values is just fitting into the idea of building out for early childhood and relocating them at Roosevelt. So I'll just start with, you know, sort of my, this is, and this is all me, but this is not just about a physical relocation of the program, but it's really about designing and implementing programming in an improved physical environment. And that environment will feature student-centered learning. It will foster enhanced commitment and attention to equity by demonstrating the continuum of pre-K through grade five services, uh, placing importance on that pre-K programming. And then, you know, my third point is really around equity. It's in enhancing that family and community engagement. Um, it's just by demonstrating the pre-K through grade five. And especially, and I know Tracy is sitting in the audience and she will um, hopefully nod her head to this, but it especially the work supporting the read well by grade three, that initiative is really critical. Um, and I think we could do some real work around that if we are co-located and contiguous in, in the same space. And that's really the foundation of equity. So those are just my points in terms of integrating the thinking around the build out and the strategic plan. So thank you. No, thank you, thank you, Henry. So I, uh, I know we've got some other comments, but I'll let you guys talk to us about Okay, I think these mics are unmuted, I think so. Um, other board members, feel free to ask any questions of 
any budget that has presented it, and uh, the floor is yours. Um, I do have a question around um, uh, currently, as I understand it, there are 10 um, classrooms for early childhood that exist between um, Roosevelt and um, one at FEC and one at Jefferson. With this new um, build out, I guess we call it. It appears to me that we have less building capacity by needing to transfer an additional class to Jefferson. My concern is really about how does that align with any future kinds of programs around facility use. Um, so while I very much embrace the idea of um, a, a more seamless pre-K through three reading initiative. I, I really think for our strategic plan around the discussion we had was really around how do we develop new and innovative programs. This would certainly be one, but it does, in my mind, does not um, encompass an elementary program that I really would like to see. So, um, well, again, I think it's an excellent plan around um, building relationships within the schools, also um, uh, enhancing pre-K literacy. I also have concerns around, is this taking a look at facility use for the longer range? So that's where my issue is. Mr. Sesson, before others ask questions, to Ms. Treadway's point, uh, and maybe this is Olivia or Tracy or Anne Marie or even Kane, in terms of uh, what this potential build out or addition would look like, do we, if I heard you correct, do we lose classrooms, uh, do we stay the same, or do we gain any? Yeah, so the classrooms that we have up at Roosevelt was proposed right now with the one classroom still at Jefferson would be about the same, um, understanding that we are decreasing enrollment, and there actually are a couple classrooms available at Jefferson and probably one at Lincoln right now. So if we wanted to expand, we could expand in those places. We also have um, a, um, it's not, I think it's a lease levy, Andrew, you're going to have to correct me. But when we finance the FEC, we use a similar financing option to help um, pay for that building. And uh, that will expire in about four years. So we do have the capability of expanding another four classrooms in four years if the board chooses to go there. We did have some kind of written plan how that would be up so that it's just not stable and we have to remember it. Um, because it is of high importance to me that we provide the capacity to add programming. Yeah, and so we backed up a little bit based on some of the conversations we had before. Um, we wanted to make sure so our steps were let's get the staff on board and make sure that they didn't want to move. And so that was our first piece. And then as Wendy said, we're going to talk to some parents around that whole process. And in the meantime, we'll get that information to you based on what those pieces are. We're kind of, we're, we don't have anything final. We think we'll be pretty close to being done in the next two weeks of what data we need to make a decision for this. Uh, we're kind of throwing it all together, um, taking a couple steps back, doing it in the right order where the, where the staff is is telling us what to do, and then the parents are going to tell us what to do next. But we'll have those questions answered for you in pretty good detail. We have, we've already given the finance pieces, so the board has all that material, and we'll, we'll attach that as a pack, and we'll put it all together so we get it all up on one spot. Um, and then we can also talk about future space and how that's relative to what we're doing right now, too. So then, with your be just one classroom 
DC classroom at Jefferson, or would there be an additional one there? Olivia, I need a little help on this one. I don't remember if we have one or two next year. You know, it would be my hopes that we have two, first of all, that partnership and, and again, um, aligning with our strategic plan and aligning with the pre-K through grade five vision that we have. So right now we have one. We had planned for two this year, but with COVID and some of the changes that we've had to make, we, we went back to just having one. And then um, I don't know if you're aware, but the last last school year, we decided that we would not run the, the preschool location. Um, as a preschool site, and rather we would um, put our ECFE programming in that preschool um, classroom there to help um, build relationships with that of people who are already coming to the FEC. So um, that preschool site was essentially moved over to Roosevelt to have two there to promote some cleaning and, um, and again, expansion within the elementary schools over at Roosevelt. So I would hope that we could have two, yes. Um, and then have, and then to add Lincoln as a site would be ideal as well. So I can interpret that a little bit. I was going to say, I didn't understand the thing. Yeah, that was a little broken up, Olivia. I'll try to interpret um, the FEF preschool classroom in there. We're not going to have that. We're going to move um, uh, um, early childhood family at it, right? ECFE. I've got to get all my acronyms right. Over to uh, that area and then move the classroom that was. There at McKinley, at so the preschool class we have McKinley, and then with Roosevelt move that single classroom, and then move up to uh, Roosevelt. So that's how that works. So there's nothing at FEC other than early childhood family ed will be moved at FEC. I think that's what you said, right, Olivia? Yeah, I apologize. I didn't know I wasn't coming in clear. It would be helpful to have this in writing. Yeah. Um, to be able to understand what, what you're going to be contemplating. Yeah, you bet. And I'll have uh, Anne Maria I'll designate you as the note taker, and Tracy will certainly help out too with that, that, uh, that transition. Mr. Chair, um, I really want to uh, acknowledge that the construct of, of a pre K through five educational environment is great. Uh, just as everybody said it there, it builds family, it builds articulation, it builds continuity. Uh, it really is a great opportunity for families, but more importantly for students throughout the uh, course of uh, several uh, years. You know, assuming they say it goes now, that's what it's probably meant. My question comes down to that's just one piece of our full educational system. I think I remember the board has talked about having a magnet schools, whatever that construct is, whatever that is, somewhere down the road. How do you see that impact in any possible future? Uh, as Mr. Trickley talked about uh, programs that we may investigate somewhere down the road. And God, it's no secret, you know, what I'm going to come forward as a, you know, an American program. How does that uh, impact this? Uh, if you want to have some kind of new version. And I know it doesn't have to be a whole building, it can be parts of the building. But I think for us to take a look at the Turkey Carol, that again, I totally agree and support the construct that you're talking about right now with the continuum of educational opportunities, pre K through five. Um, it's, it's, it's a revolutionary, if you will, publisher. Uh, it's a significant uh, process, but I think it's only one piece of the district. I think we can more comprehensive look at where we're going to be uh, in three or four years. Should, would it preclude us from having any kind of a magnet program down the road if we do that? Does it take Roosevelt out of the picture forward? Uh, or can we do something else? So, uh, just a question I think we can find out what Carol was asking. Yeah, and I'll just say. Uh, for sure, no, it doesn't take us out because you could take that preschool program as um, just as an example. And again, we have to do a lot of labor to do this. You could take the pre K through five program at Roosevelt and create a Spanish immersion program. And then your Spanish immersion program would be at Roosevelt. Or you could go to Jefferson still and we could do a year round program at, at Jefferson or Lincoln and, do, and still do those individual pieces. and. Um, we haven't touched any of the, the areas or the EX or more less Thank you. Thank you.
other board members questions or comments regarding the, the presentation? I just say thank you and Wendy, I look forward to hearing about the parent engagement. You're right, that seems like an important step, so thank you. So, Mr. Chair, the process will be you, you, the staff, you survey the staff, next will be uh, community slash parents, and then from, from that data, then we will take and look at drawings, you said, from architect, or are they pretty much the way they were before? Or so? Yeah, nothing with the building itself has changed off. We did, I take that back, we did move a little hallway connection <laughs> from the current building um, to connect to like the early childhood classrooms. And the only reason we did that is it would have easier access to the playgrounds. Um, the playgrounds would be in the plan too. So all of those pieces that the staff have talked about are pretty much taken care of. The only other piece would be storage, and we're working on that right now. But basically, the plan is pretty simple. It's four classrooms, and it's from these active office space. So from the physical space, we see in Roosevelt there. Personally, I would like to see all the early childhood together at Roosevelt. Yeah. You know, not the two at Jefferson or out there. Let's see them all together, but physically, the space we did. That's not going to be possible? Or? Now for a couple of years, because we, we hit our limit on our least lucky mats. So in order to do that, no doubt we can't add those additional classrooms until the other uh, least lucky expires so we can go ahead and build that. There is advantages of, quite honestly, of having the neighborhood schools in their current locations, too. Um, they have a couple of preschools at Jefferson, and they have a couple of preschools at, at Lincoln this time. It's not a bad idea either. Okay. Uh, one other question, um, and I think this was discussed at the facility meeting. Um, the architect has been looking at the footings so that possibly you could add a couple of classes on the second floor of the addition that's going to be proposed for the early job. Is that right? Yes. And Andrew's on there. Andrew, did you have a chance to visit with the architects about that question? Because we did ask that question. Jerry, I apologize. I couldn't catch what you said in the closed captions. Could you repeat your comment for me just so I can adequately answer it? Sure. Uh, one of the things we talked about was um, changing the footings, if possible. I thought when that building was built that there was a plan for possible expansion and that some of the footings uh, out where they're proposing the early childhood program, that the footings could have, weren't already so that you could go another story above your childhood program. Great question, Jerry. Um, so we had them look at both going up and going further out, and they presented an option for going further out was their suggestion from a cost benefit standpoint. However, if we wanted to continue to pursue, pursue the going up level, it would just add further cost. So um, it, it basically just depends on which route we want to go and how much money we would want to put into it. So if we want to eat up more of the budget to put it into um, footings for going up, then that just means um, less bells and whistles for that space or possibly less um, classroom space. Uh, however, if we design it to build out, so that would be what to the west, I believe, um, then that would be more, or I should say less cost prohibitive for future expansion. Does that make sense? Okay, yeah. thank you. I, I just want to say thanks to everybody who's spoken and also thanks to everybody for all the great comments and the things we need to think about. I am getting anxious about us um, adding steps that continue to keep this project from moving forward. Uh, I feel like we've been talking about it for a long time. So I just want to make sure we're conscious of moving it forward as well. Um, so Ted, can you kind of give me an idea of, are we still on track to, I mean, we want this project completed for next school year at the latest. Um, yeah, so visiting with John and Chad a little bit about this too, if we get everything lined up um, in place and we get the documents down to, to the board members, you have a chance to look at it and ask questions about it. We could potentially vote on it at a special session at the next work session. Oh. So, I mean, that would be the ideal timeline because then we're, we're in that market right now where the bidding is 
incredibly competitive. Everybody knows what the interest rates are right now. Yeah. And we can get a really, really good bang for our buck. Um, so we're in a great environment. Uh, right now, we really are. And it's just a matter of the comfort level of everybody. And then once, again, I'll visit with Chad and John later on. When we want to pull a string on that, that work session and do a special meeting for voting on that, that would be that'd be Okay, that's fantastic. Thanks. Mr. Chair. I just have one request. Um, while I very much understand that we want to limit how many people are in this room, when we have such a significant presentation, I would hope we could have at least the primary presenter in the room. It's too difficult to really get the gist of, of what this presentation was with so much cutting in and out. So, yeah, I can add that. I think that would be okay. You know, it doesn't sound like I mean, it does sound like I'm like, I think that would be fine. Sorry. Will you repeat that, please? No, you didn't know that. I 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 didn't because frankly, I, this is of high interest to me. And I very much value that, but there's about half the presentation I really didn't understand. Yeah. So. Yeah, that, that's a fair point. Um, Drew, if there's anything we can do as we continue to, to uh, call these hybrid meetings, if you will, where we certainly have participants virtual and, and we're here. Uh, anything we can do to better our products, we'll, we'll certainly look at. Um, and Todd, if you can work with Anne and Tracy and Malia to get all of the stuff together in a you know, package, if you will, the drawings and the answers to any questions and the financial impact and, and you know what all that would look like, that'd be really helpful. Super yeah, we still, you know, we still want to get over the hump where the, the parents are pretty supportive of this. And I don't want to waste everybody's time and we come back and nobody's supporting that computer. So we'll do a combination. We've we'll, we'll got most of the materials all ready to go, and we're just kind of waiting for that last step to really get up the last step. Uh, Mr. Amber, do you, you have any comments or questions? No, not at this time. Um, you know, I, I, uh, I, I would just echo really quickly Courtney's comment. Uh, about trying to be conscientious of uh, not adding too many steps to move forward. I, you know, I want us to have everybody's an questions answered. So I I understand and respect that, but I, I also think this is a project that that I want to see move forward as quickly as possible. The environment is good for building right now. So um, if if we can balance those things, I and I think we can. Um, that's uh, that's what I'm interested in. Wonderful, thank you. I do have one other question. Along with this, we always hear about the ALC and that they are very definitely in a substandard um, facility. Um, so that's why I'm asking for how do we look at this comprehensively on what we're prioritizing so that if we also have plans for the ALC, if we need to project around potential new programming, how do we look at this as a package rather than piecemeal? And that's why I'm coming from. I'm just going to say, about four months ago, you guys wanted us to focus only on Roosevelt and not all the other pieces. We, we, I agree with that. But that was the direction that the board gave me about four months ago. They said, focus on those belt and see what those problem lines are, and we'll go ahead and move forward with that. So I, I just want clarity. If we want to include that comprehensive piece of it, I'd be more than happy to put it in there as Roosevelt will be, it'll be on its own, the, the separate piece of it, but those other pieces will follow. I'll go ahead and write those down on there. But um, this is a little bit of change from what, what you guys told us to do four months ago. 